we've already talked about uh, different types of factoring methods, but what we haven't talked about is how to determine which one you have to use. So, um, so far, if you were just told, here, factor this, you might be confused, okay, how do I do it? Because there's different ways to do it. Uh, but there is like a general strategy or a checklist, as I have here, that you can use to um, to think about which one you need to do. There's four points to bear in mind. Um, the first we check to see whenever we're given a polynomial and we're told to factor it, the first thing we think of is there a greatest common term that we can factor out? So, like if it was um, 2x plus 4. 2x plus 4, like that. Is there a greatest common term that we can factor out? Well, in this case, yes, there is. 2 times x plus 2. Uh, so, that would be the first thing we check. Can we ch take out a greatest common term? Uh, this is a pretty common mistake to forget this. This is a pretty important thing to understand. Uh, here, that looks like a 21. So, um, it's important to understand that you need the first thing you need to do is check to see are there is there a common term, a common, uh, you know, that should say factor. Can you factor out a greatest common factor? Excuse me. Um, so, a, or maybe I should just say, leave out the greatest part, because that's kind of implied. Can you take out a common factor? I should have proofread this before I actually put it up here. Okay, can you take out a common factor? Uh, and this is an example of taking out a common factor. Remember, that was 6.1. And then the next thing we check to see is um, before we even get to the trinomials that we did in 6.2 and 6. Po or 6.3 and 6.4, we think about um, the different special cases. Check to see if it's either of those. So then we check to see is it a difference of two squares. So like if we have x squared minus four, this does not work for plus four. Bear in mind it has to be minus. So and x is a square x squared is a square and 4 is a square so we have x plus 2 times x minus 2 and if that's confusing go ahead and go back and watch the previous video i, I think that was 6.5 um i think 6.5.1 is when i talked about that and then if it's we check to see if it's a difference of two squares. If it's not, then we go to the next one. Is it a perfect square trinomial? And that was um, the the last thing that we talked about um, in the previous video. So we have so if we have something like uh, x squared plus four x plus four, well that is a perfect square trinomial because this first term is a square term, last term is a square term. It's 2 squared, x squared, and then you have 2 2 times the first square root of the first term and the square root of the last term make the middle term. So that means uh, that's supposed to be a, a check mark circle, but it didn't quite come out the way I meant for it to. Okay, so that's one thing I need to practice doing check marks with the mouse. Okay, so this is a um, the this is definitely then a perfect square trinomial, so that means we can factor it as such. We can factor that into x plus 2 quantity squared. And then if it's not, if it's none of the first three, then we see, is it a trinomial that can be factored? If, and, and that was um, 6.3 and 6.4, I think. Uh, if it's none of these, it may be 6.2 and one of these, we see, okay, it was 6.3 and 6.4. At any rate, if it's none of these, then it is factored as far as it can go already. And whenever you're done, uh, whenever you, you you say, okay, this is my answer, check to see if any of the factors that you've gotten can be factored further. Then you want to check your answers by multiplying. Okay, let's go ahead and go on to some examples of this, because this is this is very abstract until you actually see it in action. So, um, let's say, for example, we have 2x squared minus 12x plus 18. 2x squared minus 12x plus 18. So, uh, let's take a look at what the checklist says. First thing is, is there a common factor? There is a common factor, because each of these is an even number. Now, if there were a y in all these, and there would be a, a y that we can factor out too, or or a b or a c or something like that. But 
there is a 2 common to each of these, so we can factor out a 2. So the, the very next thing we would say is factor out this 2 to get 2x squared minus 6x plus 9. And, uh, close parentheses. And you can do that a few different ways uh, in the videos I talked about before about how to factor out a common factor. I talked about listing out the common factors and that'll work just fine. Uh, if you you can kinda see though that each of these is divisible by two so you can just pull out a two. Um, so if, if you need to go ahead and list them out then that's fine. But otherwise if, if you if you can just kinda see okay well I can divide each of these by two that works just fine as well. Okay so next I say, I say is this a difference of two squares? Uh, no it's not because there's 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 a difference here, but then there's an, a plus here, so it's not something that we can separate out like that. I mean, it's um, we have three terms, so when you have three terms, it's not a difference of two squares. Um, then we see, is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, let's take a look at that. We have a square term here, and we have a square term here, because this will be x, um, write that a little bigger. This is x right here and this is 3, so this is x squared and this is 3 squared. Now we check to see, is this middle term 2 times a times b? Well, not exactly, because uh, we have 2 times x times 3. That'll give us positive 6, so that means we need to change this from positive 3 to a negative 3. Now, whoops, now that makes this negative 6x. So now we have our a and b, and we can factor this out as, and uh, don't forget the 2, there's still going to be a 2 outside the parentheses. I'm just factoring the inside further. Like I said here, once you're done factoring, check to see if any of the individual factors can be factored further, and that's what I'm doing here. So since we know that this is a perfect square now, because this passed the test of being a perfect square, we can say that this is equal to x minus 3 quantity squared. And don't forget the 2 outside the front. The 2 is still there. This part right here, x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equal to this term right here. This factor right here, excuse me. So now we check to see can any of these, either any of these factors be further, be factored any further? So I'll, let me clear that off. Well, 2 can't be factored any further, it's just a number. Can x minus 3 be factored any further? Uh, no. So that means that this is going to be the final answer. Because once we factor it out, because um, once we, sorry, once we check any of the individual factors, then we see that none of them can be factored any further. And, and let's go ahead and, and do that just so you can see it. Is there a common factor here? No, we have x and 3, so there's, there's no common factors to that. Is it a difference of two squares? Uh, x is not a square term and 3 is not a square term, so no, it's not a difference of two squares. Is it a perfect square trinomial? It's not even a trinomial, so no. Is it a trinomial that can be factored? It's not even a trinomial, so no. So since this none of these four points applied, this is as to any of the factors involved, this is as far as it can go. So let's go on to another example. Uh, let's say, and let's, I'm going to go ahead and erase this just so that we can have this checklist. So let's go with 27x squared minus 12y squared. Oh, I, I did not yet. Before I do that, let's, because I just realized I completely forgot to check my answer. So. 2 times x minus 3 squared is the same thing as 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 3. That's just what x minus 3 squared means. So let's go ahead and square this. So we'll have 2 times x times x will give you x squared. x times negative 3 will give you minus 3 squared. Not squared, excuse me, give you minus 3. Negative 3 times x minus 3x. And then negative 3 times negative 3 will give you plus 9. Um, combined like terms, we'll get 2 times x squared minus 6x plus 9. Now we can um, distribute this 2, so we'll have 2x squared minus 12x plus 
18. And that turns out to be the same answer that we got. The, the, the answer, whenever we check it, is the same as the problem that we got. So that means that this is probably the right answer, assuming that we finished factoring completely. So let's go ahead and go to another example. Um, let's go ahead and write out the instructions this time. Factor completely. Oh, uh, clear that off. So factor completely. Don't the completely is pretty important. 27x squared minus 12y squared. So let's go ahead and say. Do we have a common factor? We do have a common factor because there is a 3 common to both 27 and 12. So let's go ahead and factor out that 3. So we'll have, um, when we divide 27 by 3, we will get 9. And when we divide 12 by 3, we'll get 4. So we can check that if we wanted to, but we're, but we're not going to actually check it until the end because before we continue, let's check to see if any individual factor can be factored further. So 3 can't be factored further, it's just a number. Can this be factored further? Well, let's take a look. Can we, can we take out a common factor? No, we can't because um, the 9 is 3 squared and 4 is 2 squared, so there's no common factors. This is it a difference of 2 squares? It is a difference of two squares because nine it nine x squared is the same thing as three x quantity squared and four y squared is the same thing as two y quantity squared. So and there's a minus in be in between. The minus obviously is very important. That's called the difference of two squares, so they have to be subtracting. So um, that means that we, since we have a difference of two squares, we can write this as, so remember the difference of two squares rule. a squared minus b squared equals a plus b times a minus b. So we can rewrite that as, don't forget the 3 out front, in front of the parentheses, that still stays there. So we have 3x plus 2y times 3x minus 2y. So this part right here, 9x squared minus 4y, simplifies, not simplifies, excuse me, factors into this right here. Uh, based on the difference of two squares rule, because this is a difference of two squares. 3x plus 2y times 3x minus 2y. Okay, so now we take a look at each individual factor. Can we factor 3 any further? Uh, no, there's, that's, it's a number, so you can't factor a number any further. Here's the next factor. Can we factor 3x plus 2y any further? No, uh, 3x plus 2y is as factored as it gets. Can we factor um, 3x minus 2y further. No, that's just factored out as it gets. Now, I'm, I'm kind of skipping the individual steps to check out, um, just because I'm kind of used to just thinking, you know, immediately recognizing it. But for 3x plus 2y, does it have a common factor? No, it doesn't. Is it a difference of two squares? It's not even a difference. Is it a perfect square trinomial or a trinomial that can be factored? It's not even a trinomial. Same thing over here. There's no common factors. It's a difference, but 3x and 2x and 2y are not squares. And um, it's not a trinomial of any kind, so it's neither 3 nor 4. So that means that this is as factors out as it gets, and these are the final answers. But we want to go ahead and um, check the answer by dis distributing. So I'll do this up here. So say we have 3 times 3x plus 2y times 3x minus 2y. Okay, so first I want to go ahead and I could distribute this 3 first, but I think I'm going to go ahead and multiply this part out. So we'll have 3, so we'll have 9x, because 3x three, three times 3x is 9x squared, minus 6x, because 3x times negative 2y, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, 
um, okay, sorry, once I did that, I lost track of where I was, <laughs> so, okay, so, then 3x times minus 2y will give us minus 6xy, and then 2y times 3x will give us 6xy, hope I have enough room, and then 2y times minus 2y will give us minus 4 y squared, 6xy and negative 6xy cancel each other out. So we can distribute this 3 to the 9x squared and the 4y squared to get uh, 27x squared minus uh, 12y squared. And that happens to be the same thing that we were given at the beginning of the problem. So that means that this is probably a correct answer. Well, this is not the answer. This is this is probably the correct answer. All right, let's go on to another example, uh, and that will be. This is like a factor completely. We'll have five x squared plus five x minus thirty. Okay, and let's clear all that stuff off. I'm uh, feeling a sneeze coming on, but I'm trying to hold off till the end of the video. So, we have a 5x squared plus 5x minus 30. First things first, can we take out a common factor? Well, there's a 5 common to each of those. So, yeah, we can, because a f 5 is divisible by, sorry, each of these is divisible by 5. I I'm sorry to say that backwards. So, that means we can say that this is equal to 5 times it, oops, I did something wrong. Okay, so 5 times, and then factor it out, the 5 will have x squared here. I did something else wrong. Five times x squared here, then plus x, and then because we're just factoring out the 5 out of these, and then minus 30, that'll give us minus 6. So, you have 5, because all I did was I factored out a common term from 5x squared and 5x and 30. So, now I take a look at the individual factors uh, to see if any of these individual factors can be factored further. So, can I take out a common factor from 5? Well, no, of course not. It's just a, it's just a number. You can't factor out a number. Uh, well, not, not, not in this particular sense is what I mean. Uh, can you factor out can you take a common factor out of x squared plus six plus x minus six? No, because you have a one for each of these and there's no x here, so you can't factor out anything. Is it a perfect square trinomial? Well, no, because um, this is a perfect square. This x squared is, is x squared, but six is not a square number, so that doesn't work. Is it a perfect square? Uh, I just did that. Is it a trinomial that can be factored? Uh, well, yes, it is because we look for um, a term. We look for numbers that, when you multiply them together, make negative six, and when you add them together, make positive one. That's not that hard to find. Three and negative two. Because you multiply them together, they make negative six. You add them together, they make positive one. And you can double check that, and we will double check that by by multiplying them out. Because okay, so this three, when you multiply this three by this negative two, will give you negative six. When you add this three x to this negative two x, you'll get plus x. So let's go ahead and double check it. So we'll have five. Oh, actually, I, I'm sort of jumping ahead. Um, Okay, so now we've done some factoring. We'll check each individual part to see if we can factor it any further. Um, can you factor this x plus 3 any further? Well, it's, it, there's no common factors. It's not even a difference, and it's not even a trinomial. What about this one here? There's no, no common factors. It's a difference, but it's not a difference of two squares. Neither one of these is a square, uh, and it's not a trinomial. So that means this is as far as it can be factored out. So now let's go ahead and check it. We'll have 5. That's not a ray neat looking 5, 5, x plus 3, times x minus 2. 
So um, I could I could multiply this five out to this first, but I'm I'm going to first multiply these two together. So we'll have x squared times minus x, not times minus two x, I should say, uh, plus three x um, minus six. Now I can combine these two like terms. We'll get x squared plus x minus 6. Now I can distribute the 5. We'll get 5x squared plus 5x minus 30. This is the same thing that we were originally given. So that means that we probably got the answer right. So each of these is as factored out as far as it can go. And when you multiply them together, it gives us the original problem. So that means we probably got it right. So that means this will be our final answer. And I have one more example. This one is, it's, it's not uncommon, but it might throw you off when you first see it. So factor completely, we have 2x to the fourth minus 162. 2x to the fourth minus 162. Okay, well, first thing you want to see, can we take out a common factor? Yeah, because 2 is a, um, fa com a factor that's common to both, uh, to, to both 2 and 6. Sorry, I blanked out for a minute there. Because uh, these are both even numbers, you can factor out a 2. So we'll have that this is equal to 2 times x to the fourth. And then 162 divided by 2 is 81. So 2 x the f times x to the 4th minus 81. Okay, so now let's take a look at the individual factors. Um, can you take a common factor out of this? No. Is it a difference of two squares? Yeah, it is. Because x to the 4th is the same thing as x squared squared. So um, we'll get more into this particular type of rule later on. But remember that x to the 4th means, just by definition, x times x times x times x. And you can write that like this. So you can write that as x, x squared. And then that is just, I'm running out of room, and I'll do this up here, then I'll clear it off. Um, and that's just the same thing as x squared squared. <laughs> so that means that this is just, uh, like whenever we do the a squared minus b squared, our a squared is going to be x squared. Sorry, our a is going to be x squared. Our a squared is going to be x squared squared. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clear that off and start for that over from the beginning. So we have this, the, the first term is x squared squared. The next term is 9 squared. So we have a difference of two squares, because each of these is a square term. So we can write that as 2 times x squared plus 9 times x squared minus 9. So this, this part right here is just the difference of two squares. So we can factor out the x to the fourth minus 81 into x squared plus 9 times x squared minus 9. Because this is our a, and this is our b. Um, if, you, if that is confusing, you might want to pause the video and, and work that out just the same way you did in the, um, in the previous video. Uh, previous video, two videos ago. Okay, so then we take a look at the individual parts here individual factors. Uh, can this x squared plus 9 be factored any further? No. It's not, a, it's, uh, it's not a trinomial. It's not a difference. Can this be factored any further? Well, it's not a trinomial, but it is actually a difference of two squares. See, that's, what's dis that's what make distinguishes this from this. There's the difference here. That means since it's a difference of two squares, we can factor that further. Because this is, the, is x squared. This is 3 squared. 9 is 3 squared. So we can factor that even further. And don't forget the 2 out front. The, the 2 stays along for the ride the entire time. x squared plus 9, um, the x squared plus 9 part stays the same. It doesn't change. But the x squared uh, minus 9, 
we can separate that into x plus 3 times x minus 3. So that is this part right here. And this is as factored out as it can get. So um, because, can we factor this any further? Well, we already determined that we can't. Can we factor this further? No. Can we factor this further? No. So that means this is as far as it goes. Now, let's go ahead and check that answer. This one's going to take a little while to check. So we have 2x squared plus 9 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay, I'm going to check this first by doing this part. Um, so we'll have the 2x squared plus 9, need to put that in parentheses, like that. This, this stays the same, but this part right here will be x squared minus 3x plus 3x minus 9. 3x's will cancel like that. And then you have 2x squared plus 9. The x squared plus 9 still remains unchanged. And this will be x squared minus 9. And going up here, um, we have the 2 out front, but then we want to multiply this x squared plus 9 times x squared minus 9. So x squared times x squared will give you x to the fourth and x squared times negative 9 will give you minus 9 x squared. 9 times x squared will give you plus 9 x squared. 9 times negative 9 will give you minus 81. This 9 x squared cancels with this 9 x squared. So then we want to distribute this 2. So we'll get 2 going to x to the fourth, 2 going to negative 81. So 2 times x to the fourth minus 2 times 81 will be 162 because uh, 8 times 1, sorry, 2 times 1 is going to be 2 and 2 times 8 is going to be 16 and this turns out to be the problem we originally given so that means when we the answer that we got here sorry that I'm drawing on top of what I already drew that means that this answer here is probably going to be correct so well, let me clear that off and then that means that this will be the final answer. All right, that concludes chapter six, uh, section 6.6. .6. Uh, I'll see you for the last section of chapter 6.